Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining me in the video today. This is my latest project. What you are seeing here is a piccolo clarinet, but not just any piccolo clarinet. Unlike the standard piccolo clarinet in the key of A flat, this is a B flat piccolo clarinet, one full octave above the standard B flat clarinet. And better yet, this is an instrument I made myself. That's right, I fully designed this instrument, 3D printed the body, and even had the keys cast in brass and then plated in silver. I'm very proud of this instrument and I'm very excited to show it off. So without further ado, let's get started. So why would you want to build a B-flat piccolo clarinet? Well, if you know anything about the clarinet family, you know that the smallest common size of clarinet that you're likely to encounter is this. So this is an A-flat piccolo clarinet. Now, why is this pitched in the key of A-flat? A-flat's a pretty weird key signature. You know, most clarinets are pitched in either B-flat or A or E-flat, F-C, pretty common key signatures. But A-flat is really unusual to see. Now, there is no certain reason that we have for why this is the case, but I have a pretty good idea. So if you look at how close the tonals are in this instrument, you can see my fingers are pretty much on top of each other. You know, there's really no room for error here, and it makes it very difficult to play this instrument. So this might explain why we haven't seen a lot of B-flat piccolo clarinets in the past. So in order to make this instrument, I had to get a little bit creative. So you can see that this piccolo clarinet looks quite a bit different from this one. So this one has standard broom system keywork, whereas this one, you can see it actually has simplified keywork. So the idea is I wanted to get rid of as many extra keys as possible uh, just to make this instrument a lot easier to play. So you can actually see, even though this instrument is a whole tone higher, uh, the, the finger spacing is actually a little bit better in this instrument. So I can play it relatively comfortably. I mean, obviously with such a small clarinet, it's still a very difficult instrument to play, but at least it's a little bit more manageable than this A-flat clarinet. Now, of course, that doesn't mean you only have one fingering per note. Uh, so let me go over the fingers of this instrument. So low E, uh, you'll notice that your, uh, what would normally be your FC key is just an open tonal. That does mean that you need to hold that down when you play a low E and the same for a low F sharp. So E, F, F sharp, G, A flat, A, B flat, B. So same as a standard Merm system clarinet. Uh, you only have the one side key for E flat, the standard fingering. Um, and then you'll notice that it doesn't have any rings on the first finger or the thumb, uh, but it still has the standard of Merm system fingering. So uh, F sharp is just your first finger, F natural is just your thumb, and then open G. Uh, so what's going on here is this is actually a cross fingering. So I did a little bit of a special design on the tone holes. Uh, I made them a bit angled in order to make it so that um, F sharp and G are mostly in tune. It's not 100% perfect. I still think I have some uh, tweaking to do, but it, it works pretty well. Um, and then you can see the A flat and A keys are not connected, uh, but that's okay. They don't necessarily need to be. And then obviously B flat is just your pincher keys, just like um, any standard clarinet. So the fingerings are pretty familiar for anybody used to playing clarinet. And that was done by design. So I wanted anybody to be able to pick this instrument up and just play it. Now, along those lines, the mouthpiece is a bit different than a standard piccolo clarinet mouthpiece. So when I bought this instrument, it came with two mouthpieces and I just could not play them. And the reason for that was because, you know, a smaller clarinet is going to have a smaller tip opening, a uh, smaller lay on the facing. Uh, it made it really difficult to play. So this mouthpiece actually has a facing that really wouldn't be out of place on a standard B-flat clarinet. And even with A-flat piccolo clarinet reeds, which is what this uses, um, it's actually pretty easy to get a nice tone on the instrument. Uh, so that worked out pretty well. You can see it actually has a Robner ligature. So this is a um, slim soprano sax uh, metal uh, ligature. Uh, that actually happens to be about the right size, so that was pretty good. You can see it actually has a wooden barrel too, but there's actually no bore in this barrel. The mouthpiece just sits right against the upper joint, or I guess the joint. And that's just because of size constraints. I mean, this instrument is so small that there really is not a lot of room for things. You can even see that the, the top of the register key just barely clears the barrel. Like, it, I, I cannot overstate um, just how small this instrument is and how hard it was to get everything to fit in it. But I think I, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. You know, everything feels comfortable. All the keys feel like they're in a nice, comfortable position. 
And uh, overall, yeah, I'm happy with the, the ergonomics of this instrument. Now, the keys are the big thing I want to talk about this instrument. And you probably see my video on the A Piccolo Clarnet with its 3D printed keys. But you can notice that this instrument has metal keys. And this is not a trick of the light. This is not some special finish. These are actual silver plated brass keys. And the reason I could do this, there's this company called Shapeways where you can actually send your 3D designs to them and they will cast them in brass for you. So I got these keys cast and then I sent them off to Anderson to have them plated. And then from there, it was just a matter of, you know, installing pads, installing springs, uh, stainless steel rods. And I was able to build this instrument. You know, th this is a huge advancement of technology. You know, you can design an instrument fully on a computer, uh, send the parts to be made and then assemble it. I think that's an absolutely incredible uh, thing to do. And I I'm really excited about the possibilities of not just this instrument, but you know, what else you can do with this technology. Now to give you an idea of what this instrument sounds like throughout the range, I'm going to try to play a chromatic scale. Keep in mind that the smaller the clarinet, the harder it is to play. Uh, it's pretty challenging to keep the intonation in control on this thing. Although I will say it is probably easier to play than my A-flat pickle clarinet. That's not really saying much. Uh, so without further ado, here is a chromatic scale. <laughs> So as you can see, this instrument is definitely quite tricky to play in the extreme upper register. It's very hard to get your armature tight enough and be precise enough to get those notes to speak clearly. And I should probably mention I'm also primarily a bass clarinetist, so I'm probably not the best person to be demonstrating this instrument. But that being said, I think we can learn a lot about the tone of this instrument. You can hear it has a very bright, shrill, piercing sound in the upper register, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. You know, I think certain composers and contemporary musicians could potentially use that uh, as a sort of effect depending on what they want. So overall, I'm very excited about this instrument. Uh, not only with the technology I use to build this instrument, which could potentially be used for other projects, but also just the possibility of a true B-flat piccolo clarinet. You know, I think this is an instrument that potentially composers and contemporary musicians could use, and I'm really excited to see other people's reactions to this instrument. Um, so thank you everyone for watching this video. I hope you all have a wonderful day.